see if we can move the speaker off of zero azimuth. Like this? Ah, that's great. Superfly expert Ron Hoy and his colleague Ron Miles had a hunch that they had discovered the bug with the best set of ears on the planet, the Ormia fly. Ormia flies can detect a male cricket um, over the length of, say, half a football field. That's the equivalent of a human hearing their phone ringing over a mile away. But the Ormia is crazy about crickets. There's the male cricket. He's singing his heart out to attract a female cricket. He may instead attract Ormia ocracia. That's because Ormia lays its eggs on the cricket. If it can't find a cricket, no babies. The problem for the fly, though, is that these crickets only come out at night. Where's the cricket now? Hoy knew Ormia's hearing mechanism had to be small and simple. If it could be understood, perhaps it could help people like Kyle. The first challenge was an obvious one. Hunting for the fly's ears was, was, a little, was a little bit tricky, but there on its chest were this beautiful pair of virtually transparent eardrums, large eardrums. I mean, large in comparison to the rest of the fly, but really small. Next, they wanted to find out how accurate Ormia's sound location was. Now, let's, let's take it round again. Ron and his associate, Ben Arthur, devised an experiment putting the fly on its very own fly-sized treadmill, a ping-pong ball within a computer mouse. When the fly is played cricket chirrups from a miniature speaker, the fly runs toward the sound in the hope of laying eggs. When the position of the speaker is changed, the fly alters its path. Okay. So that one was great. And the direction appears on the computer screen. The results are quite extraordinary. We found that these flies are amazingly accurate, that they're able to detect differences of about one or two degrees. Amazingly, Ormia has better directional hearing than humans. It was left to Ron Miles to understand how they did it. It was only when Ron got the fly under the microscope that the answer came to him. We took out a, a very, very fine pin, and very gently I pushed down on one ear, and I saw the other ear pop up. And when I saw that, I said, I know how it works. And we realized then that the two eardrums are behaving a lot like a seesaw. And it's this seesaw effect that allowed Ormia to pinpoint sound. Ormia's ears have become the blueprint for the next generation of miniature directional microphones. And these microphones will go into cochlear implants for children like Kyle. But the operation to fit these implants is dangerous. Despite the risks, Kyle's parents have decided to go ahead with the pioneering surgery. They believe it will transform Kyle's life. He's going to be able to hear dogs and birds and aeroplanes. So I'm very, very hopeful that it's going to give him, you know, the life that we want him to have. The surgery to fit Kyle's cochlear implant involves making room for the receiver in his head. Underneath the skin here, we're going to be drilling a, a bed in the bone to accommodate the, uh, the microchip in here. And we have to put that in the right place. It has to be clear of the ear so that it doesn't interfere with the um, microphone for the cochlear implant when it's eventually put into place. But the procedure is risky. Fitting the implant involves drilling a hole into the skull, very close to the facial nerve. If this is damaged, Kyle will be unable to move his facial muscles. That's the facial nerve in the distance there. It runs through the ear from the brain to the face. And it's at risk with a lot of the operations that we do in the ear. It runs very close to 
the surgical approach in this particular operation.